All right. So we're going to start with approving the minutes, and I'm going to turn it over to Mark. Yeah. So we have the February eighth. Did everybody get those way yeah. back when? And also today. Yep. And and today. And I don't. I'm not sure I have the May eighteenth, but. Uh, I just sent it with the okay. the one just a few minutes ago. Um, with that. All right. That's on my other email. Okay. Um, any comments, questions, corrections? Nope. It all looks good to me. Yep. I move we accept the minutes. I second. I would second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I think that was unanimous. So we've adopted February 8th, May 18th, and uh, the 23rd of what month are we in? September. The 13th of September. Uh, yes, the 13th, right. Not the 23rd, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, the treasurer's report has not changed. Do you want to see the spreadsheet again, or are we okay? We looked at it two weeks ago. <clears throat> There's. I think you did a great job two weeks ago. I wouldn't need to see it again. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I want to, before we do the applications real quick, I want to share something. Um, move this over so I can still see you. I had a hour Zoom with, um, over an hour Zoom with um, Stuart Saganar of the um, Community Preservation Coalition, which is a state organization that supports all the towns with CPA committees, all 187 of them. We pay about $1,700 in dues to them every year. Um, and can I share? I was hoping I could share. Let's see. I'm going to claim the host. No, I don't have the key. So I guess I can't. I'm not sure I can share. That's too bad. Does anyone know if I can share? <laughs> You're asking me. Um, <laughs> Edwin, I'm asking you. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna, I'm, there's a nice chart, which is now on the website, but I'm gonna step it through. Cause I, I think that this will help us with what, um, talking about the applications and understanding what Stuart said for each one. So the CPA um, allows four categories open space and recreational land often is combined. It's in, it's in one bucket. Um, historic resources and community housing. So open space is land to protect existing and future wells, aquifers, recharge areas, watershed land. It's agricultural, it's grasslands, fields, forest, um, river, stream. It's, um, it's lands to protect scenic vistas, land for wildlife or nature preserve, and land for recreational use. So that's what can be used for open space. Historic resources is building structures, vessels, real property documents, or artifacts. However, there's two things that need to be done or qualify historic resources. One is if the project or the resource, the building land, is on the state register of historic places. Or if it's not, then the, his the historic commission in town has to vote that it's a significant in the history, archeology, span architecture, or culture of the town. So those two things, it needs to be one or the other for it to be considered for CPA funding. Recreational land is for passive or active recreational use, um, community gardens, trails, non-commercial youth and adult sports. It does not include horse or dog racing or land for a stadium, gymnasium, or similar structure. And then the community housing is housing for low and moderate income individuals and families, and also seniors, low income and moderate seniors. Um, acquisition, all of those categories can acquire. 
uh, the open space, historic, recreational, and community housing. All of them can create except historical, and all of them can preserve. And preservation is to protect the personal or real property from injury, harm, or destruction. So um, that's, that's under preserving. Under support, that's only for community housing, and that's funds can be used for provide rental assistance, grants, loans, um, other assistance directly to individuals and families who are eligible for community housing or to entities that own and manage such housing. Um, it's also the area where it can includes funding for communities affordable housing trust. So that comes under the only one that has support allowed is community housing. And then the last one, the rehabilitation and restoration it's to make capital improvements. And capital improvements are things that are permanent. They can't move, <laughs> they're bolted, they're stuck, they're expected to last a long time. Or to make extraordinary repairs to make assets functional for intended use, um, including improvements to comply with state codes or federal codes or access. Um, oh, <coughs> that's not what I'm looking for, but who's oh, able okay. to share? But apparently it's letting me share. All right. How did you do that? Um, just hit share screen at the bottom. Hmm. There's a green. If you scroll. Uh, oh, I got it. Bottom. Thank you. I yes. do have it. This would be no, much easier. Thank well, you. Well, it, it probably auto hides and then you scroll down there and it, it appears. Are you now looking at this chart? Yes. Okay. Yep. That I just read you the whole thing except... <laughs> The rehabilitation and restoration. Thank you so much, Mark. Yep. Um, so this one has a few caveats. It can be rehabilitation and restoration can be used for open space if the open space was acquired or created with CPA funds. It can be used for historic and recreational land. And then it can be used for community housing if the community housing was acquired or created with um, CPA funds. And the reason they justify that is they want to really encourage new creation of um, low-income housing, not just renovating what's rehabilitating or restoring what's there. So anyways, this, hopefully the open space historic recreation community, you can see the acquisition, creation, preservation, the support, and then the rehabilitation. So I think that was really helpful to me. I hope it was helpful to you as well, but Thank you. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, so we have our vote on applications. Um, and the first one up is for restoring the Ganatic mural in the library. And Alan's here. Thank you, Alan. And um, where was the money for this going, going to come out of? This one. So that's one more thing that was helpful for me is, you know, there's 10% each year has to go into the three buckets, the open space and recreation, the historic, and then the community housing. And then the 70% goes in the general fund, but that general fund is only four projects that fit in one of those open space, recreation, housing, or um, historic. It isn't like there's now more criteria. So it's just, you know, when they want us to use what's in the set aside, not the general fund, if there is money in a set aside, Right. Um, because they just want to make sure that not all the money goes for recreation or not all the money goes for housing or all for open land. So they make us do 10% each of those three buckets and 70% for wherever in those categories that um, the town wants to do. So we've spent all our historic, it's at zero. So um, anything out of that you might think is historic, it, it is historic bucket but it's that since that bucket is zero it has to come out of the general fund right um, right so the restoring of the uh, mural will come out of the general fund correct correct yeah any um any well does someone want to make a motion to accept it or do discussion first Do we have any other questions? I can tell you what um, Stuart said about the mural that, um, and Alan did send me a letter from the Historic Commission saying that they approve um, the use of the CPA funds for that. And he said that it's, you know, the, the mural is right on. That's, that's what the funds are for. So um, he had no issue with that. 
So if we have no questions from the committee, is there any public comments? Should we request? Sure, thank you. Support or questions? Andy? Hi, I'm sorry I missed the last meeting. Uh, is it in the old library or the new library? It's in the new library. It's four feet by 10 feet and it's um, thereabouts. And it, it just looks like it was made for that space. Is it a Hadley artist? Yes. It's John Gnotic. He painted yeah. it 65 years ago when he was 23. And he came to a dedication a couple weeks ago at 89 years old. And there was a postcard made of it that was uh, uh, distributed at the 350th, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah. Is, it, is it just for the restoration or is there going to be some <clears throat> additional interpretive something so people know what it is and we've already taken care of that uh this is strictly for the restoration okay great <laughs> thank you but it's it's gonna actually repair it and then clean it and then varnish it which will make it last many years into the future should we scan it to also have it digitally or it is scanned. oh it is scanned okay it's going to prints 362 prints are going to be available for sale as a fundraiser for a John Gnotic Art Prize. <laughs> I move we, we recommend this uh, restoring the Gnotic mural mural to the town, special town meeting. I would second that. Okay. All those in any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Cassandra, Amy. Aye. Um, Steve Higgins. Aye. Great, thank you. Can't see everybody, so. <laughs> All right, um, any opposed? Any abstains? So it's unanimous. I do want to um, just have, share my screen again. Can I back up? I, I just assumed Steve was the public. So you are a voting member, Steve? I am the uh, chair of the Park and Rec. Oh, OK. So you're here instead of Diane. Diane is working abroad tonight. Yep. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. All right, let me move this over. All right, so I'm going to um, share my screen again. Let me get this big. Um, This this might be a little point, but I think on a Zoom meeting for a vote, you have to read everybody's name one at a time. So my understanding, thank you, Andy. My understanding is if it's unanimous, we do not. But if ah, it's okay. not a unanimous vote, that I, seems to be how a lot of committees yeah. are handling it just to. And so the only comment I would make, I didn't see or hear Cassandra. I see she's muted. So I don't know if she stepped away and should we just leave her as a non-vote or? Did I miss her vote? Cassandra, are you available? She's muted, so she may have stepped away. Okay. I would do it, not count. Yeah, I would, yeah, or abstain or. Yeah, I would put her as an abstention. Whoops. Okay. Um, here's draft wording for the, the Ganotic mural to see if the town will vote to transfer $6,200 from the Community Preservation Act General Fund to the Town of Hadley Public Library for the John Gnotic Old Hadley Mural Restoration. Said expenditure is to be conducted within two years of the date of town meeting approval. Her unspent funds will automatically be returned to the appropriate Community Preservation Act fund by that date. Does that seem acceptable to everyone? Sure. Very much so. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, I, oh, I have a question. Yes, Sandy. Um, are you giving the responsibility of the money to the staff of the library or to the library trustees? It's to the Pub Hadley, Hadley Public Library. Um, that is the trust. That's the trustees. The trustees the vote. The trustees had to approve our applying the application to the um, CPA in the first place. Okay. The, 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 my suggestion is to say the trustees. Okay. Just to be clear. If that's not library, clear in the request, we'll put that in the amended motion. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's a, a, a it might be a valid point, but it's. Well, you want to make sure that only the people you want responsible can use the money. Mm -hmm. Well, well, all right. <clears throat> Good point. I think that it doesn't hurt to have that language in there, but it's a matter of of process. The library, Patrick Patrick Rizzo is the library director. He's the, he's the head of the staff. He can't spend any money unless the trustees approve it, and we have to sign off on the bills. Two of us. So unless we authorize it, it doesn't happen. Uh, we can tell him go ahead and do something, and he takes care of it. But I think it's you know it's perfectly fine to have the trustees in the in the uh, in the language just to make sure there's no no question. Right. I think if we make you the grantee, and then you can delegate to Patrick if you. If you yeah. Want. Yeah. You being the library trustees. Right. Yeah. Not me personally, the board of trustees. Right. Okay. All right. You I made the Thank you, Andy. Um, the next one is the scanning equipment for the library. Um, do you want, should we like make a motion first or do you want me to read the comments from Stuart on these? Now, let's make a motion first because then we're, we're covered. Right, then we do the vote. Right. Somebody want to make a motion? Oh, I move that we uh, recommend the scanning equipment for the library to town meeting. I would second that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So for discussion, um, Stuart said that's not eligible. He said it's an ancillary piece of equipment. Um, it's, and he said digitization actually is not allowed. It's, it seems like it's preserving because people won't be touching the original as much, but he said that it's really, the digitization is not allowed. It is not preserving a historic document. He said the only time um, digitiz digitization makes sense is if say you have an old ledger that you're taking apart for cleaning and restoration. And while you have all the pages apart, then you might digitize it as a small part of that project because it's safer for the document than to be put back together and, and copied at that point. But um, that was what he said that they that that's not part of um, of the CPA. I, I bet that's going to be a big surprise to about 15 other towns, including Amherst, that have already gotten money for this. But if that's what he says, mm. that's fine. I mean, yeah, that's pretty narrow. A pretty pretty narrow view of things. Well, if that's what it is, that's what it is. I hate, and just because other towns do, do it doesn't mean that the other towns did it correctly. Glad we found out beforehand. Thank you, Mary. Yes, thank you, Mary. And I'm sorry, Alan. I think it's a great, great resource, and hopefully there'll be funds from another source that does fit in. What What do we ask for? Twenty six hundred twenty. Yeah, it was about yeah. that. Yeah. I think we might be, yeah, we depending on how much money we have left over when we finish all the stuff that's going on with the library now to make it up and running, uh, uh, we we may have uh, we may have some money left over in, in which case we would go ahead and get it as, as part of our equipment. So yeah, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Um, Appreciate you considering it. So I guess we should, we have a motion in a second, so we do need a vote. Um, are, is anyone in favor? Should we amend the motion to deny it because, well, we, we, because, because we've now been informed or um, I think just vote on the original motion? I think yeah, just vote against it. If you yeah. Don't. Okay. So All we'll those vote against? on the motion. Against? All, against. All right. Amy and Cassandra. Cassandra's put her hand up through Zoom. Yeah. I'm against. I'm against. Okay, so that's unanimous. Thank you. Great. All right. Um, the next up is the picnic tables for the Hadley Elementary School Pavilion, which Tim had brought before us. Um, is there a motion for that? Yeah, I, I move that we uh, Recommend to town meeting to vote for the picnic tables for the Hadley uh, 
Lillian. Uh, I second the motion. That was Cassandra. Now we can discuss it, correct? Yeah. yeah. Um, so again, capital items are things that can't be moved. Right. Um, the pavilion's fine, the lighting's fine, because that's permanent, it's long-term. Um, Stuart said in his view that this was not eligible because picnic tables can be moved. Um, he said it's, it's not for furniture, fixture, or appliances, that accounting term, it's for big capital items. Um, some other suggestions are maybe Mother's Club or the PTO or the Adley Helping Hands might be able to Park help and us. Rec. Could we and go back to Park and Rec, Steve? Would that be something that uh, we can get together and discuss and hopefully, um, again, which we've done in the past, get your support from your group um, to get these picnic tables in? So could we just keep this on hold for the time being? Or can you sure. hold on and with the statement that comes out of Park and Rec with an approval from the Park and Rec? What can we, be done? We can't, we can't vote on what Park and Rec, rec might. How no, no, you don't vote it. on the Park and Rec, but you could vote on it saying in, if the Park and Rec votes for the approval of dispersion of money that we could take it out of that line up that line item like we did in the past the, how could we handle it if it's not eligible for cpa it it's just not eligible in any of the buckets well it's not eligible for cpa funds so right. it has to be denied and then whatever agreement you make with park and rec is between you and park and rec you're That's saying that the money can't CPA money cannot be used for picnic tables. Or they are not capital no. items. They are not. They are not um, fixed. I wonder if he'd be. Oh, well, we can fix them. We can make them so they're part. You you can, yeah. but that limits. I looked at the space yesterday. It really limits your use of the space if you can't move the tables around. You might want them. You know, you might want that sometimes open. So if you if you fix it, it just, you know, it does limit your use of the space. Um, if they were fixed, then, and expecting to be there long term. We don't make the rules, Tim. <laughs> yeah, I wonder who does make the rules. I wonder, you know, is it, is it this one guy, Stuart, or is it, or is it some well, kind of a committee? Because it's, it's, it sounds, it's chapter it sounds very narrow to me. It's a Department of Revenue. Yeah, well. Yeah, this is the little... I mean, how all these towns that use this money, and it seems like every single time that we bring some of this stuff up, it gets he, he denies this stuff. I, what is some, well, something just seems a little skewed. I, I, he, I, he's I, done suspect... it so many times on so many different projects, and it comes back. I understand you guys need to go and ask, but. Why are the other all, all the other towns doing something and nobody's going after them? If yeah, this I is not the what the money's for. Yeah, I can't speak to why the other towns didn't check with Boston, but I can imagine, even though our intentions are 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 good and honest, that other towns might might um, fund it for this and then drag it over to some other use and then. I could see how the Department of Revenue would say that's that's an abuse. I, know, I, I would agree with you. On and that. so, you know, like anything, there are bad apples that make the rules get really strict. Well, what is Bill? Bill Dwyer, can you? Yeah, I, I want to be tread very carefully in the work of other boards. But if I understand it correctly, this gentleman you are citing, Mary, is a representative of an of an association of CPA committees. Right. It's a coalition that we pay about seventeen hundred dollars okay. in dues to. Okay. Well, uh, so he he is not the Department of Revenue, right? And he is not Town Council, right? So he is making suggestions. But there is no authority behind his suggestions. He may be speaking from experience, but it is not his place to say yes or no to anything. 
that is something that should be uh, brought up at, if someone from your board wants to talk to DOR directly, that's one thing. I understand that was a practice in the past. And if, uh, and town council should be looking at these, everything that's approved should be looked at. In fact, perhaps they should have been looked at before they got to the vote stage as to whether they were eligible. But, uh, but only town council and the Department of Revenue can say yay or nay. Um, the coalition can express its opinion. And it's, you know, it's, it's the law behind it, the CPA law behind it that, you know, they're, they're trying to follow and we're trying to follow. The coalition doesn't, didn't create the law and it doesn't interpret the law. Mm -hmm. it, it, it may attempt to understand it and to share its understanding of it, but Department of Revenue and town council are the authorities. My Anything else is just information. My understanding of the Department of Revenue right now is if you call, you get, we're too busy, call back later, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sirrah, sirrah. Mm. Yes, that's, that's very true. They're very hard to uh, deal with at this point, but nevertheless, they, mm. those two are the authorities. Everyone else is a volunteer voice, including me. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> we all are. That, that chart I showed you at the beginning was the Department of Revenue, um, which said capital expenditures. Um, Bill, I'm just taking notes. You said town council and what was the second authority? Department of Revenue. Department of Revenue. Department right. of Revenue is the agency charged apparently with uh, overseeing the dispersal of CPA funds. So they're the state agency under whose jurisdiction the uh, CPA Act falls and next to that is town council which fills in the gaps so if you can't reach dor you can reach town council hopefully uh, uh, andy were you gonna you had your hand raised uh yeah i have a little twist on this did stewart know that the um uh oh hello the structure the pavilion, the right. pavilion was originally created with cpa funds he did he did okay yeah. Because the, you, you are able to improve and expand facilities you created by CPA funds with CPA funds. I thought with that might be a way to get this improvements. through. Yeah, it comes down to how much you can move it around, I think. Karen, can I chime in on that? Sure. All right. So, um, like Bill, I want to tread lightly here because <laughs> we're up pretty soon. <laughs> but, um, but I'm an accountant. Right, so I am a CPA, um, and you know, a capital improvement. There again, it's a little bit of a gray area. So just because you can move something doesn't mean that it's not a capital item, right? So if you have um, computer equipment, is a great example. Yeah. It really, what it really comes down to is, does it um, have a long, useful life? So you know, if it's something that you you believe is going to be around for a while. Um, then you might capitalize it, meaning that you're putting it on your books as an asset that's going to be available for use for um, general rule of thumb as a minimum of five years. So, you know, I, as an accountant, I would argue that the picnic tables um, could certainly fall under that category. They don't need to be bolted to the pavilion um, just because you can take them outside of it and move it for shade and, and things like that. It's just a question of the useful life. You don't think they'd be furniture, fixture, or appliance? Yeah. Well, again, I mean, if you know you have something that you believe has a long-term useful life, you have the discretion to decide that, right? So, and that's I'm just yeah. saying that it, I think it's a discretionary decision on your part. I don't think it's a, a black and white issue. That's all. How about other board members, Amy or Cassandra? Um, I just wanted to say that I just did a quick search of a database of CPA committee funds, and there are 14 towns that have used CPA funds in the last, since 2018, for picnic tables. Yeah, there you go. Um, I know that doesn't make it right, but I do also um, understand and 
agree with what Molly's saying. There are plenty of things that could fall under, uh, you can capitalize it if you think it has a life of X amount of years or longer. So like even a printer could be capitalized on someone's sheets or however they choose to do it. Um, I don't, I'm sort of shocked to hear, I know I have minimal experience here, but I, I was thinking this would be an easy, <laughs> something that would easily fall under CPA committee funds and just um, how much of a, it, it just sort of goes in principle with the whole idea of the CPA committee is like preserving the town and the things the town has to offer. And um, I, I think I, and I do think the town also gets the, ultimate vote right if we if we right are we recommending the town to vote it or not vote it or are we recommending whether or not it gets to the town meeting so the second what what we're supposed to do is determine if it uh, if the cpa funds can be used for it and then we can determine even if we do feel they can be used for it do we want it to go any farther and then when we do that we do a warrant article and then we um and then we have that before town meeting. So town meeting okay. voters are the ultimate ultimate say in this. We so can, my, go ahead. I, I just feel like we saw the pictures too, and these are not like, you know, wood unfinished picnic tables. They're gonna be around for a decade or 15 years. And if, if it is at the point where we're kind of splitting hairs, whether it's something that's capitalized or not, I would just vote for letting the town make the final call about the money if they want to put it in that category or not it would certainly think, make that pavilion much more yeah. usable yes absolutely good amy do you want to i would use the recommendation and probably be more for the picnic tables because you really could just take the screw you could put a screw in it and say it's permanent and then you could take the screw out and then move it really what does a screw do um, you could take move the lighting you can move other things just so i don't know on something like this it's a gray area and i'd probably be more for it great mark just my opinion but i would lean towards voting to move it forward but at the same time reaching out tomorrow to the town council and the dor and if we find out before special town meeting that it truly is not um, you know, eligible. Appropriate, appropriate. And we would be uh, being poor stewards of the legal expenditure of taxpayer money if we approved it, even though we like the idea of it, then I would at that point consider pulling it from the article. Certainly but, is a good way of handling But I lean towards approving it but want to also have some legal eagles behind me. Okay. So do we, do we need to amend the motion then? Um, we want to say, depending upon the uh, what uh, town council and the Department of Revenue say. I would um, say and or, because we may not be able to hear from the DOR. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I'm sitting here, I'm looking at these things and I'm looking at them for the last week. And what would happen if the town of Hadley voted not to be in the CPA? Where would the money come from for these picnic tables? Where would some of the money come from? Uh, you know, to me, it's pretty simple. These are like maintenance items that you, the town should purchase anyway. Now, why do, why is it because everybody sees or, <laughs> I don't even know how to word it. You know, why does why does the CPA get the the privilege of funding all these projects? You know, it, what what would happen if if the CPA didn't exist in town? Where, where would the money come from? That's Nowhere. Sure. Yeah. I think a lot of it just wouldn't come, which exactly. is what, one of the nice things about the CPA is some things get done that That's would right. never get through mm -hmm. um, otherwise. But it's, you know, our, we're trying to be good stewards of the money and follow the regulations. Right. And I like your amendment. Um, I'll second it, Edwin. Um, Thank you. Yeah. 
Any other discussion on the amendment? So how so would the motion read? That we, I think, are approving the request um, contingent on hearing uh, an opinion from town council and or the Department of Revenue on its applicability as a fundable item under CPA. Okay, good. Thank you. Appreciate that, Mark. Thank you. So can we have a vote? So we just need, I'm a little no, we have to on vote this. on the amendment. On vote the on amendment, the amendment. First, then we have to vote on the motion as amended. So, so we first vote on amending the original motion. Okay. So we're so so voting on the amendment. We're voting on amending the original motion. All those in favor? Aye. Amy, are you in? Aye. 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 So that is unanimous. Um, any opposed? Well, it's unanimous. Any opposed? Um, so in, now we're voting on the amended um, article. Article. Right. Um, the motion. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Is that unanimous, Mark? I, I, I believe both. Were there any opposed? I believe both were unanimous. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. You're welcome, you Tim. We, we want them. We just want to make sure we're no, doing it right. Understood. <laughs> Perfectly understandable. All right. Now, now you're on again with, oh, yeah. let me ask before we get to the next one, does anyone want to volunteer to run that by town council on the committee and, and or the DOR? I don't even know what to ask. <laughs> I can do that. Who is that, Cassandra? Cassandra, yeah. Okay. Sorry, my Wi-Fi is going to make me chop everything up if I turn on the video. That's the problem. That's fine. And Bill? I can do so that. The process is to send an email to Carolyn, the town administrator, requesting an opinion of town council, and in the email, lay out your question in as okay. much detail and with as much supporting material <coughs> okay, as thank you have you for available. That. Yeah. I can do that. The uh, policy is <clears throat> to discourage direct contact with town council. Makes sense. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, Tim, we're um, on your restore the town hall columns and you had sent um, information. Let me. So did everybody get the revised budget? Uh, yes. I can, I think I've got it yes. right here, I can share So it. are you asking for the whole 31, 256 or 257? Well, I would like that and that gives us the ability to return money if it's, certainly we can return money when it's left. The worry is that because we really don't know the extent of damage inside the columns, it's very, uh, Larry Tuttle, who's our um, on-call architect, is very worried if we have two, two less of money up front, then we would have to, one, stop the project and come back and try to find some more money. And he says, if you can discuss and get approval for the larger amount, he's pretty confident that there's no way, well, that it should not go over his his estimate or his guesstimate at this point. Can you round that off? It's <laughs> yeah. I mean, whatever you guys want to do is fine. You want to do a thirty-one thousand straight off? That's yeah. fine. We can do things like that. I have no problem. I just want to give you the exact figures. But we can... really do hope that when we get into the project that uh, we're not gonna find as much as, as could be on those columns. Uh, hey, if you Ted, wanted to do 31,000 straight, that's fine. Yeah. Well, we can get from you guys. Now there's 87.43.35 left in the account from the previous, was that for that's, the columns? That's correct. We are setting aside the 25,900 for the painting which mm -hmm. will be done after the restoration is complete. Unfortunately, like uh, I, I think I, I stressed here, 
that Larry Tuttle said that that painting came in much higher than he would have ever expected. But unfortunately, because we didn't have the entire package for people to bid on, it, it, it skewed everything too much. Mm. So, and we can't take it, we can't rescind that project at this point. So it is what it is. So okay. we have to have put that aside. Mark? I feel compelled to ask a question. I don't really want to be the one asking it because it's kind of, I'm not looking to point fingers, but I just feel as <clears throat> stewards of the taxpayers money. I don't remember if we said how, if we clarified how this was missed in the original funding, mm -hmm. was the restoration of the columns just overlooked? I, I can't remember if you said you knew about it, but the, but the, the, the consultant missed it or? No. So I know that a lot of taxpayers will care. So I'm just asking. I, I know. And, and most, a lot of people are very upset on how this was handled. But unfortunately, all the specs and all the drawings were put together. They were reviewed by Municipal Building Committee. We approved it. We sent it over to the um, town administrator and the powers to be who, who put, who package everything together with what's called the upfront information. That upfront information is all the uh, information regard to uh, prevailing wage and and whatnot and how and how to get your budget your um, estimate in and everything else so that's how it's handled unfortunately when the package went out we and I I'm not going to point fingers I'm not going to say anything other than when the package went out to, for people to bid on all the information on the specs with regard to everything was not in the package. The only thing that was in the package that talked about anything was a drawing showing locations of painting issues. Mm -hmm. So the assumption was that it was only a painting project. Even though the front end stuff said a little bit more on um, on the columns, but there wasn't any specs on any restoration. Okay. So, unfortunately, you know, we've we've had numerous discussions now with the new town administrator, and there's new uh, ways that this is going to be handled. That any project like this. Uh, from now on is going to be reviewed by the board that's part of the project. A lot of these will be municipal buildings committee. A lot of these will be out of um, DPW, but more in the hands of Gary Berg as, an, as the um, a building maintenance director. So, we, we, we hope that this will never happen again, but it has happened here and we're kind of stuck. Um, why should we go ahead and let the guy paint if, if we have to repair everything? Right. No, so I, I understand that. I'm going to, um, I'll just give a feedback on Stuart, um, whether you want to hear it or not. <laughs> and he felt the restoring the columns is fine. And painting in and of itself is not fine, but when it's part of a project, you can't restore the columns and then not paint them. It's fine to also paint. Um, you know, job just to paint, what he said would not be, but a job that involves restoration and that's part of it. And this is what he suggested um, I had sent him the draft for the warrant article, and I'm going to just share it again because I think that'll help our vote. Um, let's see, I have too many. Here it is. So, are you looking at a um, article town hall columns? Yes. It looks like microfiche. It's All right, I know. I'm sorry. Let me see if I can view. Let's 
see. So essentially okay. you're changing the word. Yeah. So he suggested to, to see, I just changed it. Oops. Mm -hmm. um, 31. 31. I guess I had it open twice. Right. Um, to see if the town will vote to transfer up to $31,000 from the Community Preservation Act General Fund, because the historical is full, as is zero, to the Select Board and Municipal Buildings Committee. And I didn't know if that should just be one or the other, but both were on the name of the application. Mm -hmm. For a new appropriation for the preservation of town hall columns, this is to be combined with and over and above the $35,000 approved at the 2018 annual town meeting for the preservation and re or rehabilitation of the historic four pillars in front of town hall. Um, said new expenditure along with a previously approved 35,000 to be conducted with its two years of the date of this town meeting approval where unspent funds will automatically be returned to the appropriate Community Preservation Act fund by that date. Um, and that, you know, he said, just to be fully upfront with how much this project really costs instead of saying somebody remembering there's you know, 35,000 we already did. Um, this is a way to just, you know, here's an additional 31,000 on top of the 35. So people can easily see that it looks like it's gonna be 66,000. Mm -hmm. um, Tim, does that 66,000, is that a figure you're comfortable with? Yes, uh, because I have to base it on uh, what Larry Fuddle as the architect. Okay. Uh, is there any other discussion? Andy? Was the original appropriation returned to the CPA or does that account still exist? It was extended. At, and, and that's one thing, thank you, I did with the article. It was extended until next, the 2022 annual town meeting. But with the way I worded it, they're all extended for another two years from this special town meeting because it doesn't make sense to have that first amount due it next year and the rest two years. So this wording does extend it from um, the annual town meeting 2022, all of it to um, two years from this special town meeting. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did you give me that letter that I had from the. Any other discussion? To Amy? Or no? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Oh, thank you. Aye. 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 And Cassandra's hand is up. So, okay. So is that unanimous? That is. Any opposed? Okay. Very good. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate the understanding of this fiasco that we're in. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tim, for all you do. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> you, you might want to sell it before a town meeting because we're just giving our recommendation. We can't right. guarantee it's going to fly. I, I understand. We, well, we all understand that point. I'm looking at the background of Mark's picture when they're the columns right there. <laughs> yeah, there they are. Speak of the devil. <laughs> there you go. Tim, do you think that the columns can be restored and won't need to be replaced? Yes, they, they can be restored. Okay. We won't have to replace them. Okay. You said you're, There's you're enough there the yeah. to say. Great. The next article is um, the Golden Court Windows. Um, we've got Chad Howard here from the Amherst Housing Authority. Welcome, Chad. Um, and you're muted, so if you want to, yep. Yeah. Hi there. Hi. Do we have someone that'll make a motion to accept um, the Amherst Housing or the ha the ha I don't have it right in front of me here. I should open it up. Um, the Golden Court Windows. I'll move to approve the proposal for the golden court windows. I'll second it. <laughs> for disc any discussion? Um, so are again- you, uh, with, Without due respect, are you a uh, authorized uh, representative of the housing authority, Chad? Uh, yes, sir. I, uh, the, the contract officer for our agency would be the executive director, but um, she and I have both been designated as the uh, the officers of this project. Okay, and she, no disrespect intended. I just wanted to make sure, that's all. Yes, sir. 
Um, is it, and this is, uh, uh, how, how much are we asking for? $75,000. And that is um, a half of the cost, a third of the cost? Yeah, it's about a uh, 40%. Okay. Of the, of Thank you. And Mary, you have this in uh, um, in a tentative uh, um, form. Yes, I do. And this is coming from the I forgot. Was this coming from the housing set aside or the... that would make sense to me? Or have we transferred all that? No, that no, that's uh, yeah. last. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to open it up still. Just grab it. Here it is. All right, here's the. Um, just to give you some feedback. Um, so again, that DOR chart said that preserving, which means keeping the building from injury, harm, or destruction, is a allowed use of CPA housing funds. Mm -hmm. um, if it's restoration or rehabilitation, it's not unless CPA funds acquired or, or built, created um, the facility, so Golden Court. Um, that said, you know, so he said if it's, if it's a window that um, is being replaced for energy efficiency or because it'll be easier to use, that falls under restoration or rehabilitation. If it, the windows are being replaced because the, um, they're leaking and that might destroy the building, then that falls under preservation. Um, that said, he said, you know, a lot of towns do windows or doors or siding or um, stuff like that. They don't do appliances, flooring, interior stuff, because that's not going to destroy the building. Um, it might include some plumbing. It might include stuff like that that is integral to preserving and just, you know, keeping it from destruction. Um, and he said, um, so that's, that's a lot of what he said. It's, you know, it, it's, he said that the, the DH, what, the, the, the funding source that they have does not fund housing authorities a hundred percent. So, and they've been really encouraging housing authorities to go to CPAs funds. So he's getting a lot of, <laughs> a lot of requests from towns. And he, he says a lot of people do do the windows and, and stuff like that. Um, Department of Housing and Community Development. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, I know in your application, you said for energy efficiency and, and use and, you know, but the, again, it's kind of a, a gray area for, I believe I also used language uh, to preserve the integrity of the building envelope, and, and right. I think uh, rehabilitation uh, wouldn't exactly fit what we're doing here because we're we're not we're not uh, taking something that's out of uh, uh, been dis deteriorated already. We're we're trying to preserve deteriorated. Yeah. Um. Any any discussion or discussion on this? I do have a draft wording. Let me um, put it up again. Thank you. Um, Windows. OK, are you seeing draft wording for um, Golden Court Windows? Yes, we are. Oh, let me make the view bigger, sorry. Um, if I could. Yes. Just make a comment while you're uh, while you're doing this. Um, uh, increased handicap accessibility is an uh, approved use of CPA funds. So if the new windows are too difficult for people with disabilities to open, um, that's a point in your favor. I would also say that their improvement of energy efficiency is not a reason to disallow it. Right? It's, it's just it's, that if that is the only reason. Right. So right. the fact that they help make the bills more energy efficient um, it's definitely doesn't, a plus. doesn't disappear. I've seen on the cake. 
the you know the that DOR chart I had at the beginning actually says the accessibility is again with housing. It's if you if the housing facility was purchased or created with <coughs> CPA funds. So there is a mm. there is a um, for housing column. There's a, a restriction there. Um, for historic, there is not, but for housing, there is. Mm -hmm. um, and because again, they wanted the housing to be more focused on new housing than redoing, com you know, current, um, apparently. So here's the wording to see if the town will vote to transfer 75,000 from the Community Preservation Act Housing Fund to the Hadley Housing Authority for the Golden Court Window Replacement Project. Said expenditure to be conducted within two years of the date of town meeting approval. For unspent funds will automatically be returned to the appropriate Community Preservation Act fund by that date. Any other discussion on this? Is that the correct name, the Hadley Housing Authority? Or or Chad, is your? Yes, sir. I, I, uh, I, I'm a representative of the housing, Hadley Housing Authority, yes. Okay. And, and Hadley Housing Authority owns the parcel and the and the and the uh, the proper the the uh, buildings. Mm -hmm. Good question. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Um, Aye. Did you get everyone, Mark? I can't see everyone. You, uh, maybe can you stop sharing? Maybe we'll get oh, our. Thank you. Yeah. And Amy said yes, and Steve said Cassandra. yes. Cassandra's hands up. Yep. Hey Mary? That is your yeah. address. This is, this is Denise Barstow. I'm sorry, I'm calling in, um, but I was able to hear this one, and I'm going to vote yes as well. Thank you. Uh, okay. Welcome, Denise. Glad to have you join us. This is unanimous. Yeah. Uh, who made the original motion and who seconded? Sorry. I think I seconded. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Motion by, I'll have to check the video afterwards. Yeah. It might have been you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been typing like that. Oh, I think it was me who made the motion. Okay, Cassandra, I'll put you down. Okay, and then I know I'm pretty sure I had I seconded it. I'm not sure. Yeah. So the last, um, thank you, Chad, very much for thank you very joining much, us. Buddy. Thank you. Um, transfer of the housing set aside funds to the Hadley Housing and Economic Development Committee. Um, and we've had some back and forth on this. I sent everybody out what Stuart had um, asked for questions about this, and Molly and, and Bill have responded to some of it. and. There's a lot of information. Um, do we want to, does somebody want to start by making a motion or? Um, can we start with discussion? <laughs> Mary, would it be helpful to try to um, run through all of the questions that were posed and, and give responses to that first? Sure. Um, okay. Um, so I think the first question that came up, and, and Bill, I think this one is um, really for you. The question arose whether or not it was a municipal affordable housing trust. Um, and I think that we've confirmed based on the town meeting vote that that indeed is the case. And he agreed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Although I'll if, I, if, if I may just add here once again, you look to town council to protect you on these issues, not to user groups. Okay. Um, so um, unfortunately, I think you, you got drawn around in circles that town council could have pulled you straight through. And the next question was, was um... the bylaws? Well, also, was it had it been approved by the attorney general, which you said that it was, and then you sent us the bylaws, which I did send around, but I'm not sure people really had a time to read through it all. But it's, you know, it certainly does mention the CPA um, oh, um, yep. in that. 
And there is direct statutory authority in the CPA statute to allow the transfer of the, the housing funds to a housing authority. Right. And, and, and likewise, it, in the Affordable Housing Trust Fund statute, there is statutory authority to receive funds from a CPA committee. And it, the, the rules and regulations and restrictions around the CPA follow that money. So whether it's at the housing trust or whether it's in the CPA, it still can only be used for the items under housing. Um, Correct. But, so it, you know, it's not like it isn't more flexible. It isn't. It is still the same. same it, restriction. it is held in a sub account, if you will, because um, we then take on the same responsibilities for auditing and reporting to the Department of Revenue that you would have for dispersals from that portion of the fund, and we report back to you. So you, a little, you get to claim. Uh, you get to include how we handle that portion of the money in your report as well. Um, Mary, I think one of the questions that arose too is kind of the role of the Hadley Housing and Economic Development Committee. Because I think Stuart was kind of questioning that and saying, well, why wouldn't the affordable housing trustees themselves have made the request? And I think, um, you know, for us, I, I think it's a little bit I understand the question, but maybe a little bit more of substance over form um, from the standpoint that the reason our committee was created in the first place was to fill a void and recognizing that, you know, there are many things that the planning board itself could be doing, but, you know, not every 5,500 person residential community has Route 9 running through it. So I don't think anybody would be surprised to know that our planning board tends to be extremely busy. <laughs> and um, the select board was recognizing that there are some of these other initiatives that it would be nice if both of the boards could get to, but neither one um, really ever kind of found, found the time to do that. So that's why we created the uh, this committee was to be able to have a group of people that could discuss some of these initiatives, um, do some of the leg, leg work and vet them, and then bring it back to the voting authorities. So in this case, um, yes, the idea, um, the genesis was at our committee, but we then brought that to both the planning board and the select board before even coming to the CPA. So that, that's, that's why um, it happened the way it did. So I just wanted to explain that. And then another question that Stuart posed was um, the idea of having a housing production plan. Right. And that's actually something that we also talked about and um, have received approval from both the uh, planning board and select board to proceed. What we're doing right now is we're looking for DLTA assistance um, on, on that front. So we're um, working with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to see when that next DLTA program will go out um, so that we can apply for the funds to create that housing production plan. Before so, we get too lost in the jargon, that's grant money with no charge to the town. Right. Thank you. Much, much yeah. better stated. <laughs> Stuart had suggested starting with that just so that, you know, both I mean, the CPA, the town would know sort of where these funds might end up. Um, his point in the DOR chart too said the money can be transferred to an affordable housing trust. His point was it couldn't be to, you know, your, your economic development um, committee. And again, I understand that's something to ask the town council, um, but we wouldn't want to, you know, if we do go forward with this, we wouldn't want to send it to the wrong organization either right we it would clearly um the request is absolutely that it go to the affordable housing trust that was uh, the application said but we can yeah yeah okay. yeah um yeah. edwin in your idea molly and bill uh, how how would this work would we be out of the loop completely if someone has a request who do they send it to do they send it to you do they send it to us well, it, as Mary was saying, it, it, 
it depends on what slice of the pie they're looking for. <clears throat> uh, but presumably, the we would be looking, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund would be looking at maybe larger ticket items. Um, and they, yes, it would not go through, it would no longer go through the uh, CPA committee. Uh, the proposal would go to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund and the actions of the trust fund would, any expenditures of money by the trust fund would have to be approved either by a vote of town meeting or by a vote of the select board. Or, either or, correct? Either so or. If, um, if the day, if the, if the committee, if the, if the other agency went to the select board, and the select board unanim unanimously voted yes, then it wouldn't go to town meeting. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So now, um, out of the, would this be in perpetuity or would this just be a one time money grab? Well, you get funded, you, you refill the affordable housing bucket every year. And I don't like to think of it as a money grab. It's a transfer between cooperating agencies. But um, this transfer would be of the funds that you now have in the affordable housing bucket that have not been expended. Next year, you get a a refill, I don't know exactly how much it is. Mary, maybe you have a number of how much per year it's been trending. There's about, right now there's about 250,000 after we just approved windows, um, 250,000 right. left in that bucket. No. And how much and comes we, in each year? Last year we put in 45,000, the year before we put in about 30,000. And that's 10%? Um, we do the 10% and it, we've had, really big state reimbursements in, in FY21, and they expect it to be in FY22 with all the higher priced house sales and the number of sales. Um, so it may be around the 45,000, but in past it hasn't been quite that high. Now, at, at this point, I'm talking completely hypothetically, but let's say that we do a transfer of the 200,000 presently. Um, and then uh, perhaps we would not come back next year to look for the, the extra 40. We might do it every five years, um, depending on what the Affordable Housing Trust Fund is doing and depending on what you're doing with that bucket. If the bucket sits full uh, for a few more, a few years, and the Affordable Housing Trust Fund is actually expending money, um, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund might come back to talk to you. Um, alternately, so it is a one-time thing. Right. This is a one-time thing. Okay. It, I'm not saying it will never happen again. I'm not saying there'll never be another request or proposal, but it is a one-time, at, at this point, is this is envisioned as a one-time. It's a standalone request with the hopes that it could be continuing in sub-interval as is deemed appropriate as we get further into the crystal ball, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my if, crystal ball is a little cloudy tonight, so I yeah, don't know what yeah. five years is going to bring. If Golden Court comes back and says, okay, now we're doing doors, who do they go to? They would still have the option of going either way, depending on what the price would be. Right, mm -hmm. if, if we have 45000 next year and that fits their bill, they could come to us. They can come to us anyways, because the general fund can be used for it as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah. you know, I think it'd be really helpful if this, you know, housing production plan or a little more definition of what, of, of more of idea of what a particular project might actually look like. Um, it's, you know, it just seems like it's going to sit in our bucket or sit over with you for you know till the next meeting um right. anyways it's i i well, also well, that would actually wanna... mary that actually is the difference because um 
<laughs> as you know, things tend to happen fast in real estate. So when you said sit in our bucket or your bucket until the next meeting, well, that's something we, we can move faster if we need to. But at this point, you don't really even have a plan on how it would be used. Uh -huh. yeah, that, right? that is true. But if a project arose, such as a need to preserve the affordability of existing apartments, which we're looking to convert to for uh, to market rate rentals. Hmm. Um, that's the kind of thing that might not be able to wait until the next town meeting. Mm -hmm. You and have to then, follow the same rules, is that right? The money it, can't it, just be used by you for anything. It's the same guidelines uh, that we have to use. Well, as to the CPA portion of the funds, right. as to the other portion, as to the the, the affordable housing trust funds own funds, there are a slightly different set of rules that apply. So we would have to be careful in allocating between our, we would end up with two buckets and we'd have to be mindful of what we can use our two buckets for. Would you have it? I mean, this is something that if we go forward with, would be very nice to have it, people have time to townspeople to have a chance to hear about it and get more information on and you know I wouldn't want people to have really not have much idea before town meeting about this I mean how would you see almost like a public hearing something well this is part of making the proposal is part of raising the visibility of this issue um and we're talking about it and we have to keep talking about it uh whether we get any traction this this month or six months from now uh at least we are talking about it and we are acknowledging you know certain uh, sort of where we stand in the history of the project um you know, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund is relatively new, although we've been talking about it for probably eight years. Mm -hmm. you know, it was only adopted a, a year ago. Uh, mm -hmm. CPA, um, if, if I'm correct, if memory serves, this is the first time you've even inquired about dipping into the affordable housing portion of your budget in all the years that you have, you've been in operation. So, Housing is becoming a hot, hot topic, um, and we did the rental assistance. This rule, right? The act of legislation was created specifically um, as part of the governor's um, and the legislature's, um, you know, trying to raise heightened awareness around housing issues, and it was part of the. Um, Bill, what was that called? The you know when they they went through and they kind of cleaned up all of these kind of arcane um, old warrants or yeah, yeah getting the, rid of what trying to streamline that particular act was, but uh, mm -hmm. that led to a lot of streamlining of uh, uh, locating, uh, making it easier to locate a affordable and. In, in the broad sense, affordable, lower lowercase affordable, uh, mm -hmm. around MBTA stations and the like. Mm -hmm. That's not been an issue for us, but um, but there, th this is an area that has been very sleepy for a long time and is now uh, all of a sudden rousing itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, we're, we want to get get the word out, get people thinking about things. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't disagree that it would be an easier sell if we had a hard project. Or uh, a plan. Uh, okay. The housing development plan will be useful uh, to, uh, yeah, to some degree. Um, and as I said, we are actively looking to uh, to get that underway. Um, 
But part of it also is that this is this is a very sensitive issue, mm -hmm. and um, and maybe it is not a bad idea to not have it go to town meeting in detail, um, especially when people who come to town meeting sometimes come to vote no on things. Um, so mm -hmm. this provides an extra layer. Remember, it's still all elected officials who are handling this money in our added capacity as uh, affordable housing trust fund members. Yeah, so, but there's the elected officials are the people currently on the board. Correct. The board could entirely change next year. And this proposal would be in effect, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. So we, we might we as taxpayers who are providing all this money for your affordable housing um, development committee and and providing all the funds for the CPA are are going to be left out of the loop. There will, we're going to be uh, stuck with whoever is on the on the board of selectmen or the planning board, correct? That's Edwin. That's the current composition um, for expediency. Uh, the decision was made that it made an awful lot of sense for the planning board members to be on the committee because they have the the highest knowledge base in town about affordable housing matters. And then two select board members were appointed. I think if you look at the creation of the um, trust itself, the language that Bill sent around. Um, it's possible that that composition could change going forward to have other representation on it, but that was the initial initial cut, um, basically while the fund or the the trust got up and running. So I don't think there's a long term intent to cut non elected officials out of it. It just right now in the context of what uh, they were trying to do made sense, and I, and I think the other. Um, clarifying point I'd like to make too is my understanding so that the housing production plan is intended to be um, somewhat of a, a subset if you will uh, or an extension of our long range plan right so so we have the master plan that was recently updated and a, a component of that um, addresses housing and then you try to take it to the next level to say, okay, well, what does it actually mean when we talk about housing? So the housing production plan would be a study that would be done to really look at need. You know, what kind of housing stock is needed in the area with affordable being a component of that. Um, and, and I think I'd you know, politely suggest that that housing production plan, um, you know, if we get the grant money and the funding gets going, we're probably a year to 18 months away from seeing the effects of that. So, you know, again, thinking about why the legislative delegation and the governor wanted to put this opportunity for transfer in place is that they recognize, as Bill started out by saying, when you're dealing with real estate, sometimes you don't have the luxury of waiting for a town meeting to come along. Um, and the, the deal can come and, and go. Um, so even though it's not identified right now, we're trying to be, you know, put ourselves in the best position as a town to be responsive if in fact something comes along that can help us with affordable housing in the town of Hadley. Right, but it's, if, if nothing comes around, then the money's just gonna sit there. The same as yep. it is right now with, with CPA, that's right. Right, and the only reason that there's so much money in the housing account in the CPA is because no one came forward asking for it. So if no one comes forward to your committee and asks for it, it's going to sit there. So it's either going to sit in our bucket or your bucket. What's the difference? Well, well because so I, I'll say part of it is that we're in the planning business, yeah, and not. not not in the reacting business, right. Um, you don't have the luxury of choosing what to do. You are you are limited to acting on what comes to you. Um, from the planning side, we take a we could take a longer view. And where we go with that, who knows? 
um, we're so some of the background, and, and I don't want to get into the weeds on this, but 10% affordable housing is the magic line. If you are below 10% of affordable housing units in your community, you are vulnerable to a Chapter 40B comprehensive permit. Someone can come in and say, that looks like a nice piece of land. I'd like to put apartments there. Mm -hmm. And as long as they meet certain rules, they can supersede zoning. Right. If you are over 10% of affordable units, you are functionally exempt from a uh, what we call a hostile 40B. The developer who might want to put in affordable housing has to negotiate with the town and cannot override zoning mm -hmm. uh, because we have we are have gone some ways towards meeting our affordable housing goals. And we're currently at 13 to 14 percent affordable housing, which is in the top, uh, probably the top three of Hampshire County, maybe even of uh, Western Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, so I think maybe what Mary was getting at, is this something that has to be addressed in October? Not necessarily, but it has to be thought about. We have to start thinking about it. Right. So there's, um, there's a whole lot of resources on the coalition and on the DOR that talk about this. And I, for one, would like more time to really mm -hmm. take a look at them. And, and hopefully other committee members would like to also just to I, I certainly applaud the the um, planning board members. I think they do, you know, have a lot of good input and ideas on how to do this. It just the comfort level is, you know, <laughs> We're working on getting that more. And I know Andy's dying to say something, so <laughs> I'll turn it to Andy. Oh, well, only if the committee members are done with our comments. Oh, okay. Sorry. Other other committee members, Mark or Amy or Cassandra? On this particular yeah. issue or on the overall item? Because on this particular discussion, I, I don't have a comment. I was going to say that uh, I think it was actually might have been Bill's recommendation earlier that we should go to town council to get these, you know, these few questions answered. And I was going to say, if we do do that, which we should, would the uh, Housing and Economic Development Committee be willing to draft up those thorough questions for us to send to uh, the town to forward to town council? One of the questions was on, I believe we can only give it to the Emmer, the Hadley um, Affordable Housing Trust, not to the, mm. you know, that's one question. Right. Um, another question is, you know, is this fine with the bylaws, which it seems, you know, there was a lot in there saying they could accept CPA, but that's certainly. Um, well, the bylaws were the the affordable housing trust fund. What language was approved by town council before it w went to a vote at the annual town meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and again, the, um, there's no intent for the funds to come under any purview of the housing and economic development committee. I think when the application it said who's making the requests, so we were on, and probably it should have said on behalf of the affordable housing, housing trustees. Um, so that's, again, that was the only intent was that it would go to um, okay. that recipient. I think I heard earlier that it is, it is approved to, for the uh, CPC to, to transfer to the AHT and I also think I heard Bill say it is approved for the AHT to accept it. And yes. I'm, I'm not trying to be snarky, but on an earlier point, you said we shouldn't accept that from proponents. We should go to town council. So that's why I'm saying you've told us those are approved, but we've only heard that from you and you're not town council. Would you be willing to draft up those questions or anything else that you think 
we need to have. I'm happy to send you the statutes. Yeah. You can read them yourself. We, we did send the bylaws around, um, yep. but again, we're not. No, I bet if, if you would like town council to give a one sentence reply, uh, can, can funds be transferred from affordable housing to uh, from the affordable housing component of CPA to an affordable housing trust fund? Yes or no, the answer will be yes. But if you'd like it from him, that's fine. Okay. I, I just heard you on an yeah. earlier item say that that when someone writes up that question, they should have background and all this stuff. So if if you don't think the a one question, a one sentence question will get what we want, but in this case you think it will. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think I think what I'm I think what I'm hearing is less of a concern about whether or not legally we can do this. Mm -hmm. I, I mean I think generally people seem to have their head wrapped around that. Um, and that was corroborated by um, Mary's conversation with Stuart. And um, another question that came up at the last meeting was, could we get a list of the municipalities who have already done this? Um, and I just want you to know, I tried very, very hard, but apparently um, nobody can produce a listing. Okay. But I did speak with Shelley at MHP, that's the Mass Housing Partnership. Um, who was really a huge driver behind this, as you can see from the material that I did forward. And she said, I can't give you a number. All I can tell you is dozens and dozens have done this because they consider it a best practice um, to move the ball forward in terms of getting the, you know, uh, being able to utilize the funds specifically for affordable housing um, projects on a timeline that's not dictated by um town meeting necessarily depending on the nature of the expenditures so so i think the lingering question is what does that look like for hadley you know um, are you comfortable that that makes the most sense for us and i'm not you know i'm not sure how we how we get there or what um that that's you know, also what, something questions KP law may have some contribution in that, given that they represent so many communities, they mm -hmm. <clears throat> may have gone through this elsewhere. And I would, oh, and ahead, just, to end, just to end, end my thoughts and comments before we hand the committee mic over to the public, to Andy, I just wanna go on the record as saying two things. One, I, I lean for this. Um, I don't. I don't feel like anyone's saying that we on the CPC aren't doing our jobs. I don't think there's anything you know of, of offensive. I I think that they're saying our money and the AH team money together would make a stronger. You know, I I get that argument and that and that the AHT you know generally is able to meet. 24 times a year, whereas we meet maybe four or six times a year. I'm, I'm in support of all that. Um, so I'm, I'm just asking questions out of due diligence. And probably the last question I would ask would maybe, it's not really his place, to, but I would ask Bill, do you think the fact that I'm on both sides of that, that I should recuse myself when we vote, since I'm also on the AHT? No, oh. not, not unless you benefit personally or someone in your family benefits okay. personally from the uh, My first thought is that uh, also that you're not actually deciding anything. No. We're just That's deciding true. to put it in front of the town. Right. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And then at town meeting, there's no need to, because basically everybody who has an interest can vote at town meeting. No. Mm -hmm. Right, town meeting is the controlling authority. Right. Amy or Cassandra or Denise, do you have some comments? I, would, I have a few thoughts. I would um, be. I've watched several planning board meetings. Um, I'm very. I feel like they're very strong in um, going over bylaws, knowing the rules, knowing the regulations. Um, I would feel very comfortable with them um, being able to take control of the, this money into their fund and know that that be handled very well. 
Um, so whether it be us or the trustees of the Affordable Housing Trust, um, I do feel that it would be handled in the best way. So I think in my um, thoughts are, it's just a matter of timing that it would be um, easier. And we, if there was some urgency that could use the money, it could go through smoother. Being just the uh, annual town meeting or the special town meeting in the fall, you know, that makes things difficult. So, I, you know, I, my recommendations um, would be to move forward and to uh, put it into the housing trust. Thank you. Um, I agree with Amy and overall, I think um, I understand the hesitation and giving up control is uh, scary anytime you're used to being able to have the final say. But uh, I'm encouraged by Amy saying that she's confident in their abilities. I'm further encouraged by the fact that they have to follow the same exact guidelines as us. And I think if it comes down to a thought of it's just sitting in a bucket with us or with them. Um, there has to be the possibility that it wouldn't sit in the bucket with them as long because an opportunity may come along. And if that opportunity is one that would fall within the guidelines we would have to follow anyway, and which might be lost by the next town meeting, I think it's a, a good forward thinking move to just be prepared. And I think anyone who, it wouldn't um, deny anybody the opportunity to get this money from this bucket, whether it's with us or with the housing people. Also, I'm wondering just, um, it sounds like we have people kind of feeling very hesitant and some people feeling like this is great and I don't know if there's an option to possibly transfer less than the full amount um, if that will make the difference or if that's something that would be better left to the town meeting but it seems like that may be a plausible compromise where we don't grant 250,000 to them but we grant 150 and see what happens and it sounds like they're also not going to be coming back and requesting more money if they haven't used it yet anyway so i um appreciated that question from edwin just about whether this was a permanent thing or a one-time thing and i think as a one-time thing it would be uh, a good option to explore for the town and it makes sense to me that it is moving towards or already established as a best practice, practice as far as being prepared to take advantage of opportunities in real estate that come up. Uh, I know, of course, it'd be an easier sell. It's like, you know, the decisions of being prepared for something that you don't know is coming or waiting until it comes and hoping you can push it through really fast. But I would lean more towards the being prepared side and just having the opportunity for people who are entitled to CPA funds to be able to get them in a more timely fashion with regard to the affordable housing. So I would, I'm more for this. Denise, do you want to say anything? There. She? Um, I, I just, I support bringing this to town meeting. That's all I have to say. One thing Stuart had recommended was there is a um, grant that a lot of towns are, a, a agreement uh, that a lot of towns are doing. If they're doing this, they have a separate agreement with the affordable housing trust, just kind of spelling out timeline. And But that's often, I think, if there's a specific project and it would be returned after X amount of time, which um, this is open-ended. The funds, I just... In the housing set aside, it's 308,339. We just approved 75,000. Mm -hmm. So we have 228,339.46. So it's about 228,000. Obviously, the general fund can be used for housing as well as anything else. Um, this is just how much is in the, in the set aside. Um, 
All right. I like Cassandra's idea that if that would make those that are a little bit puckered on this, if it would make them more comfortable to reduce this in initial, right. you know, that we might do it again, but maybe not just handing our whole wallet over, but saying, all right, we'll give you half or two thirds, or I don't know if others would agree with that. And if the um, proponents would agree. We can, we, we can tell whatever amount of money we feel is correct. Mm -hmm. We don't have to, the proposal is for X. We can say it's going to be, no, it's not going to be X. It's going to be Y. Okay. That's what we can do as a committee. Now we don't want to make it so that it, there's too little money in the account, but I, I really don't feel too comfortable about this whole project. I think Mary's idea of having some meetings and, you know, here we are two, three weeks before town meeting, before this gets enacted, that we're going to be presenting it, saying it's okay to vote on this one. I don't feel that's enough time. I think that, you know, with any time that the taxpayer's money is concerned, we ought to be very, very careful about how we spend it. And that's how I feel. I think this is just too short a time to go about doing it. Steve, I'll, I'll ask you, I know you haven't been for some of the background of this and probably haven't read a lot of the information, but if you'd like to add anything, please do. You need to unmute if you're... <laughs> no, no, I don't have a comment. I'm uh, taking it all in and it's all interesting. Okay. All good. You had a four-legged subcommittee with you earlier. Any thoughts from that side? That is my baby. I, uh, I didn't think I was going to have a dog. I, I do love him, but he's very irritating. The girls are all at soccer and they're on their way home. <laughs> so I am babysitting. Thank, Thank you. you. Does anyone else? We, Andy, we, did you say what you would want to just say? Go ahead. Um, just three, three quick points. Um, there were small expenditures at Golden Court when Joe Fitzgibbons was the chair uh, for the new door uh, and the security system. So there has been some money spent, although not in, in many years. Um, also, the CPA committee can be proactive. It doesn't just have to act on grants it can receive. It can initiate them or ask people to bring them or they, the they, uh, proposal to spend the money can come from the committee. So the CPA committee can be um, uh, proactive as well. Um, uh, I think the reason why there's been, why there's so much money in the housing set aside is that there's been no one to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, no one willing to take responsibility. And the new housing trust fund um, is the perfect uh, group to make sure that that money is used for its uh, intended purpose. Um, which is to improve the housing situation um, in Hadley. The difficulty from what I'm hearing is that the committee is so new um, that there's no, there's no tradition or procedures or plan yet of how this money is, is going to be used. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, give us the money and we'll tell you what we're going to do with it later. Um, which always spells trouble in town meeting. Mm. Um, I think you might have an easier time getting this passed uh, if the trust fund was more solid and could answer more questions. Um, but I do think it's an approved CPA use. And then finally, I just wanted to remind the committee what Cassandra suggested is that you can change the proposals any way you want. You can add money, you can subtract money, you can give it to one group, you can give another group authority, you can do anything you want to them. You don't have to accept it the way it is. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be 200,000 every two years, it can be 50,000 every six months. Mm -hmm. um, and you can build the pot up slowly if the committee feels more comfortable with that. That is entirely up to you. Mm -hmm. um, but I would just say, Briefly in closing, 
that if the uh, housing trust fund doesn't use this money, who is going to? <laughs> uh, there just isn't anyone else. Um, so uh, hopefully um, you'll decide to do it in a way that you feel comfortable. Well, at this point, we don't have a motion. Um, does anyone want to make one or do more discussion? I was going to make a motion. I, I, I definitely pausing hearing Edwin's thoughts about, you know, and, and as there is no urgency, perhaps we can do some more meetings and all feel a higher degree of comfort and put this on the agenda for uh, annual town instead of special. So I not going to make the motion. And there, there is a bit of information on the coalition website with examples from towns. They do have some towns that have done some of this and um, and you know by spring maybe you'd have more of an understanding of where your your plan might be if that's funded or not or underway. Um, I, I would be really sad if something happened in the next six months that you really wanted that money for. Um, you have about 300,000, correct? Um, and that may be growing as well if other projects of funding, you know, happens can, as well. Can I add something about the meeting? Um, I just, I kind of feel like I agree with people who are saying that uh, sort of generating awareness and knowledge about everything we're talking about is important. And because of that, I feel like it would be beneficial to bring it to this town meeting, even if it is met with skepticism or uh, people who don't like the idea, it will absolutely serve to raise awareness about the topic and it would also give people more time to potentially discuss it again at the annual town meeting if it came up again. I don't feel like, I've lived in Hadley for seven years and I feel like I've hardly ever heard about an issue in advance really of the town meeting. So I think that that would be a, a good way to achieve the goal of having people make informed decisions and sort of generate a conversation and get things moving in a certain direction. Thank you, Cassandra. That I, you may have just pushed me off the fence. And I don't know that this will get any traction, but I will make a motion that we um, transfer $100,000 to the Affordable Housing Trust as kind of putting our foot in the pool. Um, that last phrase would not be in, in the motion. Um, I'll second the motion. A sort of a down payment. So, yeah, it's you know good faith that we like the idea, but we want to know more about it before we just give our credit card completely over. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So to the Hadley Housing Authority Trust, is that what the title is? It's the Hadley, Affordable Housing Trust. Hadley Affordable Housing Trust. I would, I just want to say, yeah, I would support the hundred, but I would support the full amount because it's really, it's only the set asides we're talking about. We have quite a bit of money in the CPA of amount. We've been talking about this um, with, I mean, select board's been talking, planning board's been talking. There has been um, some of the numbers were at 13% for affordable housing in Hadley, but some of those numbers are going to be coming up. They presented it, I think, over maybe even two years ago to the, the planning board presented to the select board stating that this is something we're going to have to talk about. We're going to have to look at this. We do not want Hadley to go under the 10%. Right. So we just keep kicking the can down the road, um, you know, so that I definitely didn't want to push it off. I would support the 100, but I would, like I said, support the whole amount because we have plenty in the other um, in the general fund. Plus, if it was something that didn't work out, hey, they could always put it back in. 
I don't understand why they couldn't put just in or town meeting, just say, you know what, it, this is a more of a pain. We want to dissolve the trust and we're going to put it back in. I'm just saying we need to be serious about um, the affordable housing in Hadley because we don't want um, it to go under the 10%. And we need to be ready when the, the option comes up. So is that, do we have a motion? Is that a real motion and a second? We have, we have a motion and a second for the 100. And I'm not, I'm not proposing the 100 because I don't have faith and confidence in the house. In, the affordable housing trust, but I just think that there's a there's a feelings that I'm trying not to step on of this is new to Hadley to transfer. So I'm mm -hmm. so yes, I think we're open for discussion, or we can move on to a vote if you want. I you know I'd hate to see this like soundly defeated at town meeting because people were really you know if it's if it's two hundred. 25,000 or um, I, I think Cassandra what you you know and Amy too it, it is important and to have a group really actively saying what's best for Hadley and finding a way to to expand the affordable housing is certainly what this is intended for um, it's just so vague because there's nothing out there that that's harder plus it's new plus it's um, but the town did vote last June to form this and the CPA, you know, accepting CPA funds for projects is certainly in there. Um, and I would just say, we're not giving the money to Northampton or Amherst, it's, it's Hadley. We're shifting it from our right pocket to our left pocket. It's a balance sheet transfer from one bucket to another. That's all it is. Empowering. <laughs> um, I personally agree with Amy. I think it's sometimes important to move forward but I, I agree with the concern that I feel like as an end result if there's a potential for it to get approved for the hundred thousand at town meeting and there's a really low chance of it getting approved for the full amount then I'd rather just go forward to get something happening so I'm not I would um, I guess defer to the more experienced Hadley ice about what to expect there. Um, like I said, I think it might just be a good compromise to get things going and see how people feel about it and start the mm -hmm. conversation if we do the 100,000. But I, I personally would vote for the other, but that doesn't mean that that's the best thing for the town and that that would be the best option to actually get something to happen. I think that if we vote for 100,000 now and turn around and ask for another 100, a thousand in the next meeting and there's still no plan that's a little awkward too you know in some ways it might be better to just do the bigger amount now and this is the purpose this is why it's not the you know it shows full support for the, the um, Hadley Affordable Housing Trust um, and the Hadley Affordable Housing Trust does have bylaws that are under the town law, the state laws rather, that you know, been approved by the town and by the attorney general. And, and they are, there are, they can't just, and they have to follow the CPA regulations for this amount of money. So. Um, Those are good points too. I do think what Amy said about us having enough money in the general fund is an important point because the whole point of this committee is to get this money to the places that qualify for it. And in that regard, moving moving the money to the affordable housing, like I said, it's not denying anybody who should be getting CPA money the opportunity to get it because we moved it. They they still can come to us and they they maybe don't know about us or are already working with the housing people in Hadley and an opportunity comes up that they might not have even realized they should come to us with. And it still just opens up the money landing in the right hands more efficiently. So we have a motion for a hundred thousand. Does anyone want to amend that or can I, we go ahead and vote on that one? 
Let's vote on that one. All to a vote. All right. All those, all those in favor of the hundred thousand. Aye. And I will do that. Aye. Aye. All those, all those opposed. Opposed would be Amy. Okay. Any abstained? So I'm going to share my screen again because I need some help with um, the wording on the warrant. Yeah, it would be $100,000 from the housing set aside to be transferred to the Hadley Affordable Housing Trust. Let me make this bigger. I know. And or do we, or do, you know, you know, I don't, do we have to mention the town treasurer or that's just inherent no we have to we have to mention the total amount and who's it who who it's going to and where it's coming from so i put to see if the town will vote to transfer a hundred thousand from the community preservation act housing fund to the hadley affordable housing trust do we want to put in a caveat that says if you didn't spend the money you got to give it back i don't think so well, if we do that, then there's usually a time limit, and that's not right. Which, which then the 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 Hadley Housing Authority can ask for an extension of another two years or another whatever. I like the idea of putting a time limit on it. That's just my own personal opinion. I think that's how we handle the grants but this is yeah. we're we're not saying use up to this amount i think in the spirit of the transfer we're just saying i don't know the coalition does have a specific grant agreement to use between the cpa and the housing affordable housing trust that does have you know limits and returning but um I mean, I think if we were to do a time limit, I'd want to do something like five years. Um, but, and then it could ask for an extension, but I don't know if that's. They can ask for an extension now. What's the difference? If we've said it one year, two years, five years, or 10 years, they can always ask for an extension. What's yeah. the difference? It does make it less open-ended. That's not what we voted on. Um, we um, I agree with Mark. I think it's kind of a, I mean, first of all, we, I know this isn't what the town meeting vote is, but we, we did vote for a hundred thousand instead of 250,000. And if all of the, um, sort of authorities on this very new idea and process are suggesting that this is the way things are going, I think, um, it would be odd to see it go for a long time without being used or to have it sort of just come back, especially if we're retaining 150 or 123,000 in our account in addition to the general mm -hmm. fund. Bill, does you said that the um, Hadley Affordable Housing Trust will regularly report to the CPA, correct? Annually annually should do you think that should be in this or is that that's in the bylaws probably uh that's in the state that's in the enabling act the okay. statute so is there anything and i know <laughs> is there anything in there that says if we're not happy with what you're doing with the funds we have we can take it back or is it um kind of um, one-sided not that i have seen but i haven't been looking for that Okay. Um, no, no, can't well, take it back. Hopefully, you'll be spending it. I'm sure wisely if you spend it. I'm sure hopefully, you'll be spending it, and hopefully, you'll be asking for more because this is what this is what it's intended for. Um, all right, we have. Oh, if are people okay with that very simple wording? Um, to see if the town yeah, will vote to like, I, I personally would like to see a time limit, but if the rest of the committee doesn't, I'm not going to argue about it. But 
Yeah. But when if you're making a motion to amend the article and there needs a second. No, I'm not. I'm, okay. I'm just being speak, speaking out loud. That's all. Okay. A straw poll. Yeah. Then you can you can vote to uh, send the article to town meeting if the discussion's finished. Yeah. I think we already I think did. We just did. We just did. Oh, yeah, it was just it was after we voted. We were having second thoughts if we should add some language, but uh, there was no there was no motion. So right. I asked for help with the wording after we yes. voted. Yes. Um, all right. We'll see. We'll see what they say. Okay. Thank you, Bill, and thank you, Molly, and thank you for the work you're doing on this. Yes. Okay. And thank you for your patience. <laughs> this is new to all of us. Yeah. And yeah. come come back in the future and get more money. <laughs> well, we're, we're going to be putting our thinking caps on on our talking points now. <laughs> you have to put a different spin on this now. <laughs> I, I, I would like to get it to a point where it's a housekeeping amendment. Exactly. Or a housekeeping article. Exactly. But I think yeah. that's very possible in the future once everyone sees the machinery is humming along. Yeah. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Hey, thank you. All right. A few more items. We'll try to go through them quickly. I like to have meetings two hours or less. <laughs> or less. Um, CPA email address update. Um, Amy, I don't know if you had any luck with uh, with Andy Klepacki. I did get a hold of him. Um, I can somehow, I did, and I told him to, he needs to uh, get in communication with you, Mary. So I don't know, maybe if you want to call him or I'll have him call you. I don't know, but he's he is willing to work with you, Mary, to get it over to okay. under you. I'll, I'll email you asking his contact info. Okay, sounds um, good. Great. Oh, uh, Amy, did you get my con conflict of interest acknowledgement? Yes, you did, right? Yes. Did you get everybody's? That was the next thing on here. Yeah. Um, I don't think so but um if anyone hasn't you don't have to sign it and send it to her you can even just email her saying that you've read it um right. and then i will hand them all in that's fine right. and i spoke with i actually I, I met in person with jennifer on a, another issue and i asked her about this at the end of the meeting i said if i've done my conflict of interest for the planning board. Do I need to do it for every other committee? She said, no, you know, so basically one brain, one conscience, <laughs> as many committees as I want to be on. So I think I'm set. Um, there is just a reminder an online training um, on the website, town website that's supposed to be done every two years. So if you haven't done it in a while, um, it technically is supposed to be every two years for, um, conflict of interest as well so it's um, not fun so there is a boot camp um tomorrow at noon that the the coalition is is running and i know bill is um cautioning us about you know the what they have but they're also we pay them a lot of money to really learn about the cpa and learn about the laws and also see what other towns are doing and what um, work with the DOR. So, it, you know, for us, it's, I think, a great resource just to help us understand things better. And, and, and Bill's right, we need to make sure our town attorney agrees with what, you know, um, we feel is, is well good for our town. Um, but they, they're doing a boot camp, and I know a few of us are signed up. So if you want to, um, it's on the, the communitypreservation.org website. And, um, will be at noon and they said they'll do some in the evenings too so to send that out um back back in back in the days when i was the chair i didn't have the greatest experiences working with the town attorney who okay. knew less about the cpa than i did right and a lot of times he would say gee i don't know <laughs> and that was his assistance so maybe that's why they don't let you talk to him he gets to stand behind the curtain now and you just get a, that's okay or that's not okay. Right. Yeah. Well. There's a lot of resources and a lot about these housing trusts and, and um, yeah. it's, it's, you know, yeah. I think there, it's a good There is, I don't, nah. there's just something about them that just seems a little awkward. I don't, I don't know why else, but. 
I'm just speaking my mind, that's all. Um, so the next item I have on here is the next meeting dates. Um, we had talked about having applications due January 1st, and then, um, you know, meeting like two weeks after, soon after, you know, time January 1st, get them right out to everybody. Mm -hmm. A week and a half later would be the second Monday. The January 17th is Martin Luther King, so we want to stay away from that. So we either meet January 10th or we have the first meeting January 24th and the second one, um, you know, soon after in February, two weeks after that, which is certainly a possibility too. Um, that's kind of the, we were on that later schedule last year, but it's um, another, you know, one thought was to just try to meet in both January and September, the second and the fourth Mondays, you know, the applications due January 1st and, and then September 1st. And that way everyone would kind of know mm -hmm. when the meetings are gonna be and when the applications are due for anyone applying. Um, but it, mm -hmm. looking ahead to January 1st, does that, and January 10th and 24th, does that sound like a, doable thing to try to set it this early or um yeah why not yeah that's uh, that's my opinion okay. It'd be in the post-holiday january doldrums anyway so <laughs> right yeah. and i said if we're me i said to jennifer if we're meeting in person by then what are our options and i'm holding out for the room in the library but we'll <laughs> she said let me know but we'll talk about it closer to the date but um one thing that might be nice, she pointed out, you know, even at the senior center, some of these rooms have, we could, the things we've been sharing on the screen, we could have up on the wall, you know, instead of having a zillion pieces of paper, we could have the treasurer's report up on the screen and the, you know, some of the other things so that it, that, that might be really um, nice to have if we are, I think the library room has it. I know several rooms do in the senior center. Um, mm -hmm. We'll see. All right. Well, we'll, um, is, we'll, the, it, is, is the deadline for proposals the same date as the first meeting? Or no, it's January 1st. It's January 1st. Right. So and then the first meeting is January right. 10th. After proposal deadline. Uh, okay. First meeting. We, we, right. well, we're, do you want to we're make a deadline January 3rd? So well, I, I, I just found it really helpful to have time in between. So, again, when I was chair, I would work with the applicants. I got sort of got a preview of the proposals and I could tell them, you know, this won't fly or don't do this or change that or okay or, or whatever. So I found that to be very helpful. So how much time? I mean, we Not like a week. Yeah, this this is 10 days. If 10 we, days. So, you know, but, so that's enough. But we try to get the proposals out to the whole committee, you know, a week early because um, it's, you know, just so people have a chance to actually read it through before sure. the first meeting. Um, and mm -hmm. It's interesting. Now, Stuart said oh, what a lot of towns do is they actually just kind of do CPA stuff at the annual town meeting. They have the deadline like October 1st. And then so they have time to really do due diligence. They have time to, you know, ask a lot of questions or talk to the town attorney or talk to various boards. And then do like just emergency stuff in the fall because the falls, you know, so it's hard to meet. It's hard to meet in December. It's hard to meet in July or August. So you know, it's that's. And I don't know. I mean, I'm not proposing that at all. That's not been our our um, our way of doing things. But it, it, you know, it does give some more time to to dive into this stuff. So we're not feeling mm -hmm. so rushed and, um, yeah. And a lot of things can wait six months if it has to. Um, the housing trust is unknown because who knows what might come up in those six months. But um, mm. all right, is there anything else anyone has? No, I just want the committee to know that I resigned my at-large position and I am now the representative from the Conservation Commission. I have that documented. So and I presented uh, the documentation to the uh, select board and I get the copy for myself. <laughs> so. Very good. Well, I'm so glad you're still on the- And we need and another at-large position. So if yeah. anybody knows anybody, tell a select board or 
And we still don't have a representative from the Hadley Housing Authority. I, I contacted um, the woman that's in charge that works with Chad. And I think Chad, well, he may not still be on. Um, Mary Villian, and she gave me the names of the two people that are in Hadley um, okay. for the Hadleys, and I emailed both of them. That's the only thing I had was email contact and did not hear from either. Um, let's see if I... Um, John Yusko is a tenant member at Golden Court, Christine Yazerski yep. is, is treasurer, and um, Rich Witkus, Richard Witkus is chair. Right. Um, and I did not hear back. <laughs> Nobody from the Hadley Housing Authority wants to sit on another committee for some reason or another. Don't know why. It's too bad the housing trust can't have that spot, but it's not set up that way. It's not set up that way, no. Yeah. But is that because the Hadley bylaw? It's no, the CPA bylaw. That's the state. CPA law. The representative of the housing authority. Right. Um, so. You might want to consider having a CPA member on the uh, on the trust fund committee. Yeah. You might want to think about that. That's a good idea, Andy. We could bring that to the select board because I think they are the ultimate deciders. Right. Right. Well, if you guys are going to do half the funding, which is what it sounds like, mm. you know, you might want to mm. have somebody on the committee. Mm. Yep. Although Anything? they they're technically on call every first and third Tuesday, so it's a little you know. I think Bill would let you know if, if there were actually any issues coming up, but it's, he keeps it on our agenda at the bottom every every meeting. You know, if there's any business, we usually say no. So, mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Well, Mary, I think you're doing an excellent job. Thank you. You you really are. Oh. And, and Cassandra, as treasurer, I think you're doing an excellent job. I'm riding on Mary's coattails this meeting. No. <laughs> so appreciative of it. Thank you of, of doing the treasurer. Um, mm -hmm. Please look at the website. Jennifer spent some time with me on Zoom teaching me what to do to put in links. And I put in some extra links. I put it to the DOR chart that I showed you. And I, I put it to the um, community preservation. And I put it to the full law if anyone wants that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the application I updated a little bit too. So, um, and Mark, if you can please get me the final minutes for the three we just approved. I know how to stick those on. Yep. No other board or committee seems to be current, but she still encouraged us to <laughs> put them uh, on. So. No, it's better to start early than to uh, try and play catch up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure I'll dig back before, but we can at least do the three we did now. And get them on and um, and then for previous projects, I just had a link to the doings at the town meeting votes and said, you know, you can look here. Um, so please take a look and the, the email isn't quite correct yet because I, I, we don't quite have that set. I, I put mine in in the meantime, but um, hopefully, so please give me any feedback on that and um, We'll try, do our best to, I tried to set it up so it really is up to date, except the only thing that needs to be updated. I didn't even put January 1st and September 1st for application deadlines. I didn't put a year. So um, it will be easier to have it look up to date and be up to date. So mm -hmm. um, anything else? No, I move we adjourn. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Good work, for everybody. Anybody opposed? <laughs> and thank you, Andy, for joining us. Oh, my yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. All uh, right. Goodbye, everyone.